Hey kids, how's it going? This is Pulse Ray Vision coming to you live from Quattro Cinco Studios in my mom's basement where we just yell for hot pockets and lasagna when we get hungry. Uh, I have been so pumped about this show ever since Randy said, okay, I'm finally done traveling the globe. I might make it home to my office. I might have some time. And so I was like, Heck yes. And uh, one of his streams I was listening to earlier, he mentioned that maybe it's just the cancer in him, but he just wants us all to get along. <laughs> and now I, that hit me because I'm a cancer and I feel the same way. I'm like, why is everyone spending all this energy on all this drama and stuff? So we've got a great show for you guys. Uh, we got Keja in the comments. We got Fast Abdul here for the tech. Bets and Crypto, who's also on screen. Justin Knapp says, hello, Legend. Love your ex post. Justin Knapp is going to be hosting and help, well, help host the Salt Lake meetup on April 13th. So if you guys make it up to, to Lehigh, Utah, it's like 20, 30 minutes outside of Salt Lake. Francis Powell's in the house. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, believe in yourself says, greetings, Ranny, Pulse Ray Vision, Mark, Fiber Finance, Vets, Kazik, Fa they they're they're with everyone here and says yo what's up so uh if you guys have any questions put them in the chat we'll try to answer everything we can thank you so much for being here and uh hit the like subscribe and share this if you want on on uh, twitter and x uh, i'm gonna let these guys introduce themselves if you don't know them already going clockwise starting with mark well thanks a lot <laughs> hi everyone um yeah i'm mark um founder of the forge and curator for just a decentralized um, launch pad and incubator that we're about to launch on, on Pulse Chain. Awesome. Awesome. I don't know anything else, but. <laughs> no, that, that's good for now. It's good for yeah. now. And then and, and Randy? Uh, Randy Hilarski, uh, OG Hexkin, uh, believing that Pulse Chain is the best V1 or uh, layer one, layer two around. We're going places, and I'm also the founder of Nope Token and longtime crypto guy, 2014. So, loving this. Awesome. And uh, uh, Vets? Hey, hey, bang, bang, Vets and Crypto, your boy Vets. How's everybody doing? Thanks for uh, allowing me to tag along and be that real uh, fly on the wall and uh, absorb some more knowledge from the great ones. So, thank you. Awesome. And Adam. Yeah, Adam here, Viber Finance. Been doing crypto consulting now for almost four years. And uh, the 28th Wealth Group with Chaos Chris from The Verse. Got about 40 guys in there and everyone's crushing it. I mean, we're hitting 30, 40 X's every week, it seems like. And uh, it's the all season is really about to pick up. So just excited to be here now. Got positioned in the bear market, feel like. Got everything packed we needed to, and now it's just enjoy the ride. You're muted, brother. Me? No, no, I, I was the, oh. the host. The host was muted. I <laughs> trying, <laughs> trying to practice good sound uh, hygiene here, but uh, I was gonna say this: uh, that both Adam and Randy are two of the people I know that are like the dogs in the weeds, right? You guys are out there snooping and digging and looking at all sorts of new projects. And so I'm really happy to have you guys here to, to share some of the things you guys have found that are awesome and some of the things you found that suck. So it's good to it's good to not only know what to get into, but what to get out of or stay out of. Um, and so, but before I went into all that, I wanted to cover uh, the Nope token first oh, by really? Randy. <laughs> I want you to, yeah, I want to talk about the Nope token, where it came from, and and what community it supports. Sure, sure. So I uh, during the nine inch raise, I know this might be a sore spot for people, but because the way nine inch launched and everything, but the nine inch raise went really well. I think we raised about twelve and a half million, and uh, I was sitting there one night, you know, when you're about to doze off to sleep, you know that right before you uh, go into your REM or whatever it is, you have that. 30 minute window or so where your thought processes are so amazing. You have really good ideas. And I thought to myself, wow, wouldn't it be great if there was a meme token out there that had the big middle finger to government and to the people that are 
you know, trying to stick us with needles with untested shit and and uh, force us to stay in our homes and you know put all these crazy laws and rules and force us to accept people. You know, I just I don't like being told to do anything. So I said, wouldn't it be great if there was a token out there that was just a big middle finger? And and that's why I came up with note. And uh, my group was already called. I have a Patreon group called No Permissions. So N O P E. It just made sense. I was like, holy crap. And why don't I airdrop it to my um, walled garden, which is no permissions. And the, the it just made sense. And so I said, why don't I pay them all back their fees that they paid on Patreon? So their, their Patreon fees are $20 a month. So I said, that's what I'll do. I'll make sure the token starts at about uh, each airdrop for per month is 100,000 note tokens. That'll be about 20 bucks. And that's exactly what I did. And it, it went up 56x on the first day. <laughs> the people that were paying attention, they they bought it. And even though I had told everyone there was an airdrop associated with no, <laughs> the next day my airdrop went out. And uh, some people had, I think I, I um, I'm not gonna say names, but there's a couple people that had. Twenty, thirty thousand dollar hair drops with nope. <laughs> so it was a, it was a pretty spectacular day for lots of folks, and still is to this day. We're up about seven x. Uh, it's all about uh, proof of farm, really. We're we're farming. So you take your tokens, you you put them in a pool on Fox, and you earn nice APR. Right now, it's between twenty and fifty eight percent, and we're waiting for. Um, Two fucks to launch, and two fucks is going to ramp up that APR. Uh, we're probably going to be closer to, I'm guessing, 35 to 55 percent APY or or 60 something like that once two fucks launches. And we're also on nine inch and earning APR over there. And pretty soon we'll have a pool on SparkSwap. So uh, I, my job is to go out there and find places to put Nope to earn um, what's called rewards. And uh, we've been doing it really good. So I've got a nice little team that I pay. And we got you know some great people that make an image like Kaisa's in the chat. Kaisa makes my images. Uh, I've got um, a buddy, Pete Gorman, the guy who makes the videos for Dollar Vigilante. He's my editing guy. So I've got one of the best video guys in the whole world working for me. And uh, just having a lot of fun, man. That, that's, that's all. And I'm out there live streaming four nights a week, uh, promoting Pulse Chain as well as no. And people are like, oh, but Brandy, your token's down so much. Yeah, it's called Hart's Law, jackasses. If you go into my, if you go into my token, you see the sales. The sales are very small. There's, there's no big sales in there. It's all because of the whole. Uh, I don't know, if, if people know what Hart's Law is, is when you have two tokens, they go up to, down together, right? Like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Traditionally, you could look at that. Same thing's happening to us. Uh, it's not that there's a lot of big sales. There's not a lot of big buys right now. Um, and I would tell everyone if you're if if you're buying right now, make sure you, you're buying the the main tokens of the blockchain like Pulse Chain and uh, Hex and things like that. Nope is a secondary, and I don't tell people go go buy Nope. Nope's going to be just fine. We have a nice benevolent whale. Uh, he's a wonderful guy, and uh, he he makes sure that everything's taken care of with the liquidity providing. So that's it. That is awesome. That was a really good explanation. And where where do you see um, the community going, the Nope community going? Well, it, it depends on me and the group ramping up our marketing efforts. So the more that we go out there and we piss people off and I start doing interviews and and uh, talk, start talking shit, I think that the more I talk shit on the Internet and the group talks shit, the more ex more exposure Nope gets. So, you know, right now you see these celebrities saying, uh, I'm not a Trump fan, so don't don't judge me. But they're saying uh, nope to Trump. They got this little Trump shirt saying nope to Trump. Uh, nope, not again. All the celebrities like Taylor Swift and stuff are wearing it. They stole my brand. I was there first. <laughs> so so we can go after people like that, piss them off. Uh, it, you know, I just my mom says I'm, I'm thorny. Right. I, I, I like to I like to. You know, rub people the wrong way. Well, especially if they work for the government or three-letter agencies. You're completely right about that. It's <laughs> what, what's what's the saying? There's no uh, it, there's no bad um. Oh, what was that? What was that saying? Um, no bad attention. It's just attention. Yep. 
Yeah. Exactly. Yesterday was absolutely wild on Twitter. I'm like, I, I was getting yelled at for so long. Get a Twitter, get a Twitter. I'm like, fine, okay, I'll, I'll get on Twitter then. And then I'm like, whoa, okay, everybody's like eating each other alive. Yeah, it was absolutely wild. I don't yesterday. think I looked at Twitter once yesterday. It was, it was getting rough. It was going downhill all week. <laughs> yeah, I was I was on like all day and like today and yesterday is like the only days that I get to actually do these things, right? Other than just like focusing solely on DRT stuff. So yeah, that's it was pretty wild. I was just on Twitter like all day, and then eventually I had to be like, "Okay, honey, we're gonna go on a date. Let's just go. <laughs> <laughs> just get out of here, while <laughs> Just get out." Hey, I, I want to welcome Nate from DJ Roundtable to the panel here today. I want to uh, welcome Rax Ropes, Align the Light, uh, Dithy. I think that's pronounced Hex Softballs in the house. Hex to see Smo Spider. Uh, uh, and uh, believe in yourself as well. Thanks, thanks for joining us. We also got uh, Luna Seapoint, my online ghost, and Harmonic Hex Kid in the house. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a it's a party now. Uh, let's go on to the next thing that I've been trying. I've heard a lot of, but I have not done a deep dive into myself. So s please spoon feed us, Randy. What is Spark Swap, and and what is it good for? All right. First, I'll introduce Chloe. One of our new kittens. <laughs> She's over here rubbing on my leg. <laughs> we got two of them, two little sisters, and they're they're skinny as a rail, um, but they're you know street cats that were adopted. So <laughs> fattening them up, man. <laughs> uh, yeah. So well, let's ow, pretty little shit. She's scratching. Me. <laughs> okay, Spark. What's Spark Swap? Spark Swap is um, another exchange on decentralized blockchain uh, exchange on Pulse Chain. And AJ is the founder. AJ is one of the most dedicated individuals in the Pulse Chain ecosystem. He really, really, really cares about where Pulse Chain's going. And he continues to build. It's a DEX, but they're not just doing DEX things. They're building all kinds of stuff for cross-chain. And I think that's so important to have cross-chain. Right now, the best way to bring money into Pulse Chain is via SparkSwap. They have their own uh, S die. It's their own version of die that you can bring money across, and it's going to cost you, you know, a few dollars rather than fifty or hundred dollars to use um, the main postchain.com bridge. So uh, learn how to do it. I've, I haven't done it yet because I don't have to. I haven't had to bring any money in. But if you're going to bridge, that's the place to go. Um, Check it out. That Spark Swap has this thing called Sparkler that I think is absolutely outstanding. You take your Spark tokens, you stake them, and you earn uh, Spark PLS um, LP tokens. And then you take those LP tokens, you put them, say every week, you you take them out and you put them in you into the uh, the LP pair. And then the LP pair earns you Spark Swap tokens. <laughs> so every week you take your spark swap and add them to your to your other uh sparkler so i really like what they're doing i, I i'm really supporting them uh, aj is a great guy and he's got a wonderful team that is super intelligent uh so if anybody has anything else about spark swap uh and their what's what's their pools they have these pools that automatically compound and no one else has that so you don't have to go in and even mint your stuff anymore. You put it into the auto compounder and it does it for you, depending on the cycle that you want. So if it's one hour, or 12 hours or 24 hours, it'll automatically auto compound. So check it out. Yep. The infinite money loop. What do you want? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just staring at a lot, me. Of, a lot of love here. Uh, Jonathan and Paula is in the house. What's up, Jonathan? Great to see you. Yeah. A lot of people are enjoying that. I, I've, was compounding stuff with both liquid loans and earn. And like I said, you've got to go in, you got to swap, you got to roll, you got to do your own compounding. So that sounds, that sounds awesome. I'll definitely it's be checking be great. that out. All right. Uh, the next thing I got up here is Pulsar. Pulsar is this project being put together by Kinetics and RT3 and um, Crypto Kool-Aid who is a whole universe of interestingness himself, just crypto Kool-Aid. So what what can you tell us about Pulsar? Well, uh, hopefully it'll, it'll help help save us from some of our losses from Titan X. Uh, 
it, it's built on top of Titan X, but it's going to be on Pulse Chain rather than Ethereum to save us from the ETH fees. I mean, this is Kool Aid. I think it is Kool Aid and Kinetics project, right? And uh, if you're in Titan X right now, it's probably where you're going to want to put your money. It's going to be really hard to get Pulse Pulsar a year from now. So my plan is to take all of my Titan X. Um, it's going to be difficult to do because you need one billion Titan X per one ETH. So if you don't have a lot of ETH, it's going to be hard to participate in Pulsar, just to let you know. So you're going to need it matched on both sides. But it's going to be an exciting project where it's super difficult to get in a year. Uh, that's why I'm putting everything there that I have left in my Titan X. And because I, I, I'm Titan X wrecked. I don't know about you guys, but anybody else participate in Titan X, man, we just got our balls handed to us. <laughs> Seriously, big mistake on my part. I, I think I'm down about seventy or eighty percent. It, it's we, kind of insulting when you go back and it says you've got six cents of ETH to claim. It's <laughs> like, oh, yeah, let, let me pay that sixty dollar fee to get that six cents of ETH, Titan X. You guys are sweethearts. <laughs> hey, but on on Pulsar, so you put up your Titan X. They'll give you a two to one Pulsar. I'll give you a two to one on the east side and then you get a four to one on the pulse chain side and they'll put it in that lp pair on the pulse chain side that's my understanding okay all right well i got the numbers wrong sorry and so lena c point says it's 10 million titan per 0 0.01 eth okay so that's what you need for that for the entry there yeah, so yeah, I was one, gonna say one ETH is an awful lot. Oof. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Oof. Like yeah. full ETH, yeah. Who? Yeah. But yeah, good. No, it'll be good. Uh, excited. Some good uh, game mechanics, obviously behind that. So looking forward to Pulsar. You know the interesting thing about Titan X. What, what, wait, what's that? The interesting thing about Titan X is that we were uh, in our community. We were kind of like split on. We're like, we don't think this is a very good idea. But then people like Will and and Willie who were going wild with it. I mean, they're like into it, and yeah, it, it hit a lot of red flags for us when we were looking into it. So we just kind of like told everybody, you know, stay away from it. And unfortunately, that ended up being correct. So yeah, that's what I did initially. I fell for the FOMO. Yikes! <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <laughs> uh, anything else on Pulsar from you guys? Want to add to that? All right, cool. Let's go on to the next uh, topic at hand, which of course is EHEX PHEX. Um, what do you guys think about EHEX PHEX? Obviously, you had Richard um, just put a stake through the heart <laughs> of EHEX with a little tweet being like, the winner is decided. And uh, I think a lot of people thought that, but then when he said it, it had so much of an influence on the chart it was insane it went down to 0 0.001 on ehex which is still i think it's still not that that far above it right now but it uh it definitely made a, a statement which I, I i i mean every one of my onboards that i've got with that have ehex stakes they they also have the phex stakes thank goodness but they'll come to me and they'll say hey my stakes over what do i do and we'll pull it up they're like well your stakes worth fifty dollars and the fees are three hundred dollars. So you can wait until hopefully the price of hex comes up to justify the fees. Other than that, you just let that baby bleed. You just let it bleed into the penalty pool, you know. And so if you're a if you're a whale, dolphin, shark, you have enough money on there to pay it that's worth paying the ETH fees. But somewhere in the squids and down, it's not. It just doesn't make sense on paper for most people. And that's kind of where I am right now is if you're, you've got some big stakes on there. Awesome. They'll probably be worth a lot in the future, but Ethereum on, I'm sorry, Hex on Ethereum seems to me like a, a big boys game. It's not for your, your average investor. I was kind of thought it was though, too. You know, it, it always seems like it was a big boys game anyways. That's the whole, I, that, that's the reason why Hedron uh, and Icosa got really popular because it was a way that you could get T shares on Ethereum without paying so much, you know? Because unfortunately, Hex is it's a little bit older, and so therefore, you know, you can't get the T shares as cheap as you could back at the beginning. So yeah, as far as like the whole E Hex P Hex thing, man, I've been rocking some boats on that one. 
I I don't know if you guys saw the the effing hangout uh, last night or two nights ago, but yeah, I got on there started talking about what I think the uh, the the future is for uh, this community. Um, and yeah, people were very quick to be like, no, 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 <laughs> not quite that. Um, as of right now, right? Here's my viewpoint on it. So Hex right now is kind of having an identity crisis and people really don't know what to think. What's good, what's bad, you know, which one should I take? Oh, wait, eHex is the baby. But no, the baby of Richard Hart was transferred into Pulse Chain for Pulse Hex, right? And so eHex is like a dead shell now. Technically, eHex is just nothing more than a meme. But people, they they don't want to believe that, right? And then people are believing, oh, they've got they've gotten wrecked. And if you were buying eHex uh, after the launch, yeah, okay, yeah, you're down. But all of your stakes beforehand for all those like OGs who are in the process of believing that the everything's going to zero and that Richard Hart wrecked them. Well, all of your stakes got transferred over, you know, got migrated over. So you've still got that money there. So, uh, I mean, there's so much going on with Hex. And I mean, I would say right now, Hexicans, as far as like trying to onboard people, Hexicans need to, <laughs> yeah, uh, pool party. Um, that was, that, I think that was another one too, of getting, uh, getting some T-shares as well. But yeah, right now, what I think people need to do is Hexicans need to just take a step back and figure out their shit and go off in the corner guys uh the poster child as of right now needs to be pulse chain because pulse chain is the new l1 pulse chain is what people are going to want to go play on want to go build on right and that's the reason why people are going to be onboarded you know and then we also need to look at the direction the market is going and uh caught a lot of flack for this one too is the direction the market is going is we're a bunch of traders now we're not necessarily people who like to stake out okay well that's that's fine let take what the market gives you don't don't fight the flow, right? I mean, if you're trying to swim upstream, you're just going to get tired. If you try and swim with the stream, you'll be going places. And so as of right now, as traders, what what is it that people want to do? Well, they want to trade meme coins. That's that's one of the big things that people are doing. Uh, just look at Solana. I mean, it's blowing up. Okay. And over on Pulse Chain, you can you can trade very cheaply, right? So what I'm what I'm telling people is, hey, go get yourself a lot of Pulse X. Because if you have Pulse X, right, and you're holding on to that, you own the casino that people are just, you know, <laughs> trading back and forth meme coins with, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of good things happening. I think people need to settle down with this whole hex thing, go, you know, put that in the back burner and start looking at what the future is with Pulse, Pulse Chain and uh, Pulse X. That's yeah. just my. And uh, Vets, will you take a second and explain to us about Pool Party and the Veterans Pool? Yeah, so a while back, and I think Randy did the same with no permissions. You had an option to claim a name uh, a few months back for Pool Party. And Pool Party um, allows it in a decentralized manner. That's the cool part, in my opinion. Um, and to Luna's point, man, like it, I liken it like going through a divorce. It takes time, man. A lot of us invested. Yeah, we shouldn't be emotional and get attached to shit. But a lot of people did put in a lot of time on the ground in real life with Hex. It just takes time. I mean, it's a healing process, etc. So I digress. So um, Pool Party, in a decentralized manner, allows everybody to come together. And like, for example, I created one for veterans. Uh, if you click on the information uh, tab, I explain what the intentions are of the 1% of the pool organizer fee is going to go to. And that's going to go to um, a, a like a, a project for uh, tunnels for tunnels to, to towers or a Travis Mannion type foundation. Uh, those that help uh, first responders, wounded warriors, uh, things of like that. I just want to trying to create something to pay it forward. We're all here taking, 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 making money, blah, 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 blah. Can we not, when the green candles start going up and everything, just scrape a little off and just kind of try to pay it forward, but in a decentralized manner. Like, I don't want to be the one responsible for any bags and moving money, and now I got to get a 503C and justify where this is going from point A to point B. And I mean, you know, so... That's the premise of it. So a lot of people now have all this e-hex. They're wondering what the hell to do with it. 
put in the pool party, man. Make it grow. Uh, it's going to come due at December of 2024. So you got time to get it liquid again before the proverbial peak or the top of the bull. So you can still do stuff with it, make it grow. Um, you know, my thing on the whole eHex hex uh, is don't emergency unstake. If you want to move any liquid that you have over to the pulse chain side, it's your prerogative. Do that, whatever. Um, but otherwise, you got it on both chains. You're good, in my opinion. Just let it ride. Who knows what the future may hold? Um, obviously, Alex is coming out with some great stuff. Who knows how that's all going to play out? Um, but that's my two cents. Love it. Love it. And Adam, what have you been telling your clients? Because they've definitely been watching their portfolio. They have money in Hex, eHex, some stakes in eHex probably as part of their overall portfolio. What what do you tell them and how do you guide them through this turbulence? Um, Honestly, I, maybe one person has said something. I mean, everyone has got, the, has got a long-term vision, but this is just short-term noise. And everybody that I, that I work with, I told, sent an email out and said, I'm doing this. I'm swapping a bunch of P-Hex for E-Hex. We we're at like almost eight to one. And that profit, that trade is now almost like two and a half X in profit. So you got to capitalize on these opportunities when people are freaking out out there and running around yapping. Like that's the time where you got to sit back and say, all right, is there opportunity here? And try to capitalize on it. So that, that was pretty i mean i just look at the cell wall there that uh bank x has and i think there could be a uh dick swinging contest or a stalemate here of who's going to hold off longer are they going to want to i think there's like what 700k in liquidity now in eth so if that stays there i mean we could this could play out for a while i don't know what's going to happen but i think it's short-term noise if pulse chain goes up to two and a half X plat past sacrifice. No one will even care about EHEX anymore. I would be so focused on that and the gains. And it, I think it's just short-term noise and, you know, capitalize on the opportunities. They're out there. I think yeah. uh, real quick, I think that whether you want to or not in general, I think the ETFs, when the Ethereum's come and all the, the noobs, the no coin, no coiners are coming in. Like that's the first thing they may see. And, and what if people start to learn about this CD thing and, you know, T shares and money printers, like, I don't know who knows what the future can hold. It's going to be interesting. So I'm going to hold some skin on that side. I mean, I'm staked. So I, it's an easy play. Yeah. That's hold sweet. your stakes guys. The one thing I'm worried about is with the no coiners coming in, looking at this CD thing called hex, they're going to start on Ethereum, right? So that's where they're going to start. And then they're going to look at hex you're gonna be like oh yeah buy the hex thing but they're gonna see the hex on ethereum and they're gonna see that chart and they're gonna go oh okay i'm not touching this unfortunately that's that's just the name of the game now i do think that ehex will definitely pump for sure there's gonna be i mean it's become a meme at this point people are literally gonna go buy it because ha, ah, this is the ethereum version lulz but you know we actually uh there's a uh, a big whale right now who's really really buying it up so that's another thing to kind of look at um, there's going to be some games over there, but uh, I think I think right now what we need to do is say, hey, do you, are you guys sick and tired of working with Ethereum? Isn't that frustrating? All these things, we have a better version of it over here at Pulse, and just don't don't mention Hex because <laughs> that'll shoo them away. Maria, yeah, Maria is buying a sh up all the eHex right now, so the, that wallet will be one of the biggest holders, and I'm perfectly happy with that. Like those guys yeah. over there, Nine Iron Capital, Sunny Coach, they know what they're doing, and they're creating a new way of doing DeFi. Like what we what how in 2020 with Uniswap and Hex and DeFi Summer, where it's being it's happening right now. DeFi Summer 2.0 with Sunny's ecosystem, like coexistence. Steven is got has a lot of guys on it. Um, and it's 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 awesome to see. So, whoa! Speaking of cats, there. <laughs> Jesus. This is this is the cat stream. <laughs> yeah, our <laughs> cat here, he, he got attacked. So we had to put a little like club on his foot here. He got mauled. Yeah. So he came back like missing a toe. So <laughs> I was gonna say something about the the OA. The OA has so much of the hex on both sides that if I were the OA and the price went to zero zero a million zeros, I would just pick the rest of it up and and you know make my grip on that entire ecosystem tighter. 
because why not? You've already got most of that it, that, that you own, right? So I, I would say that maybe. Um, we, we I want to go into the future of crypto in a second, but first, uh, Beth wants to hear something some more about PT. GC, I met Coach in Vegas, and he was yeah. able to go over a bunch of the ins and outs of the community. So, um, give us an update on PTGC, will you, uh, Adam? Uh, I mean, it's it's just growing, man. I mean, we get, we're fortunate to find that at. I found it when I didn't even know what it was. I was calling it the golf course coin when I first found it. It was like, oh, this is great. So, it was just pure luck, to be honest with you. And then. Other people started finding it, talking, coach. I met him. And from there, I started just learning and understanding what they were doing with pairing up PTGC with all these different coins. Like the, I think one of the biggest liquidity pools other than Pulse Chain is with PDOT. So even when the coin doesn't have that much volume and PDOT starts pumping, Hart's Law brings up PTGC. So with the sell tax in there and the constant buy and burn it they've created basically a new way like i said of DeFi 2.0 like it really is like i've there's nothing like this on any chains that i've i've seen yet and i think it's only a matter of time before it starts spreading to other chains and uh yeah it, it's it's something you gotta to take time and understand and learn about there's burn liquid energy and 808 which are four other coins that are kind of below them so they create liquidity pools with all those and then the bots go between the arbitrage and there's just constantly volume so the more liquidity pairs get created it's just this whole web of of volume that you could sit back at some of the pools where coach i had him on stream and he was showing me a bunch of these hex pairs he had created and there hadn't been a human in that pair in three months and this thing is doing four or $500 in volume a day, which right now it's not much, but you got to think when the price of Pulse Chain, if it gets 10, 20 X higher, now you're talking serious numbers. And it took a while for me to wrap my head around it. And I still don't fully understand it, but that's what I'm trying to do right now is create, find PRC 20s out there that don't have liquidity pairs. Like I felt like Hex, just hex right alone. I paired it up with all of Sunny's different coins, A1AX, B2BX, Reward R, Center. And I've created like 50 liquidity pairs with hex alone in the last two weeks. And I just put $10 on each side. So 20 bucks. And I'm just letting them sit there and what just learning what these guys are doing. These pools will just grow, 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 grow. And it's amazing. I love it. I got you. Got, yeah, I got we got us all taking notes here. We're, <laughs> this is why. This is why I started YouTube. I, I gotta. I gotta. I gotta thank this jarhead below me for uh, getting me into PTGC and Burn and all this stuff. Um, I just. I bought them and I've never touched them. They just sit there. That's all they do. Mm -hmm. Just sit in my wallet and do their thing. Um, I, I guess I should be providing liquidity. I should be put. I, I got a meeting with no, uh, Coach coming up. Uh, yep. I asked him for some help with Nope, what should I do? And I guess he's going to tell me to make 500 pairs or something. Uh, so, but we've, we've already seen what happened because Nope's got about a million dollars in liquidity. And we've already seen the Hart's Law. Hart's Law took us up. Hart's Law took us back down. So, uh, but I'm not worried yep. one bit. And when people say, oh, Randy, your price is down a whole bunch. I say, look, Hart's Law, baby. We just, we just got to take yep. what it is. It'll take care of itself. And, but yeah, I mean, you should, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm going to make a pair with vets with PTGC. I'm surprised I didn't. Maybe I did. I know I did even with like the 414 and a little bit of a tropa, you know, just all these little things in the whole ecosystem. Uh, big fan. Uh, I remember vividly, you know, popping on uh, Vibra's stream in the chat. And, you know, back in the day when you just got into PTGC and that was like kind of right when uh, PRS went out and all that. And mm -hmm. we're all kind of like learning, like, is this a rug pull? Is this legit? Who, who's, you know, doing the due diligence and the research. And I mean, you know, rewards go to the early adopters. Right. But it, it, it's, it's speculation. It's a gamble. You never know what's going to work, what's not going to work. But it's working out damn good so far i'm really happy and awesome awesome all right so the next topic i want to cover is what are going to be the amazons the facebook's the netflix of this new um internet of money right because 
we've seen a lot of speculation, a lot of really interesting, you know, uh, experiments. And the RH ecosystem has been leading the way so far as, as, as utility and, you know, finished code, that kind of thing. Those, those first principles, not your keys, not your coins. But in the future, uh, do you guys think anything right now is going to be taken off and, and really dominating crypto yet? Or do you think we're still way in the, the early phases where we need to let some other stuff play out? There's definitely other things that need to play out. But I can tell you right now that the 404 NFTs, those are what has been needed for like the GameFi sector. Because they, you have NFTs that works absolutely fantastic, right? However, they're not very liquid. And there's like, say, with Alluvium, they want to have uh, all of their NFTs, you know, whether it be like lands or skins or things like that, right? Um, they want to be able to move them across to other games, right? Well, the more liquid that you can make NFTs, the better. And ultimately, that's a 404. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Richard's brother, if you want to go go over with uh, Will Stevenson from our show, yeah, you guys would be great together. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we, we, we love our crayons you know what i'm saying like, hey. <laughs> oh my god i love them Chopping uh, out <laughs> yeah but yeah no i think the 404s are going to be a big deal in the gaming sector so it's just something to kind of look for and yeah what um right now avax is really working to onboard like a huge amount of uh a game uh gaming companies and stuff so it's definitely something you want to watch for. Um, I do believe right now, Pulse Chain, we should be trying to get gaming onto here. Whether it's we make our own games or we go out and, you know, try and get some sort of studio to do something. But I truly believe that Pulse Chain is really kind of lacking when it comes to all these uh, these new things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with Pulse Pot and what they're doing because their their code is uh is all their own code. They didn't copy anybody, they didn't fork anybody, they're just building it. it it's and they got their new sports book coming up and they're they're doing some pretty cool things. So that version of gaming, because I'm a gambler, that side I think Pulse Pot's got covered. And there's another one too. I can't remember the name of it, but I know oh, Pulse Wars. Pulse Wars uh Wars coming. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and it's supposed to be launching in a couple of days. So, you know, we, we're starting the, the, the seeds are there. Now we just need to bring water. Some big, yeah. We need some big, we need some big ones to take notice to bring gaming over here. It totally makes sense. Well, and then blast star, you know, blast that was ish, you know, and that, you know, I mean, so they're, yeah, they're filtering, they're coming over migrating slowly, but surely. Um, and, but Jacob's yeah. Amazing. Right. Um, from that standpoint, um, Looking forward to it. Pulse pot, you know it. Get more attention. That's the whole thing, right? Bring the attention over. <laughs> Moondog says everyone making pony picks lately. I made mine horny and called it unique, unique corn. <laughs> Will Stevenson says he's not a babysitter. <laughs> he's super uh, bullish on uh, curators forge. Yeah, I think that uh, communities are more likely to become the big thing in crypto more than just the project, right? Because communities are what is the glue that holds everything together through these huge boom and bust cycles and through all the volatility. It's, it's the community that is like the roots of this plant that we're trying to water, right? Uh, what, do you, what do you think about that, um, Mark? as far as communities and the, and the future of crypto or what might end up winning and being the big uses. Sorry, I was uh, gone there for a second. My, my daughter just woke up and walked in here. So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think, I mean, yeah, obviously communities, as you say, is, is, is a very important factor and the kind of starting point to make things happen. What I really like is projects that I, that start without even having a plan, just building a community first. People get really excited about something, and then they start adding projects and utility to their tokens, to their NFTs. I think that's really cool. But um, as as real, like the really big next thing that I'm hoping to come is some kind of you know decentralized social media. I think I've talked to a, a 
few of you guys here already you know that i'm coming from this youtube background and um and i think you guys all know it you know with twitter and all of that how um problematic all these social media platforms are and uh, once you can do a social media platform that is decentralized right where people can earn for all kind of activities um, and I think once you can have a social media platform that um, people don't realize that they're using Web3 or crypto, it's just so easy and so fun to use to engage with each other. Um, I think that's going to be uh, that's going to be a huge, you know, the next Ethereum, the next thing that can take crypto into much bigger, um, just get much bigger adoption, get, you know, 10 times as many people involved in crypto or 100 times as many people involved in crypto. So I, I, I think that would be a huge yep. next step. Can I say something to that, Mark? Yes, I, please. Uh, you know, I came from the Steemit teams, uh, Steemit.com, the old one, that the original uh, social media on the blockchain. And I made a killing. I made a shit ton of money on Steemit. I was part of the team. And then when I left, and when I stopped using it, I was um, building my own project. And I, I raised a bunch of money. And I was trying to build my own social media project. But that was really before Web3. This is going back to 2018, right? And we tried to build this. It was so difficult. I didn't have any devs that freaking knew what they were doing. They'd start something and then they quit. You know, oh, Randy, your, your idea is too bold. Your idea is too big. I, I can't do the code for it. I, I know the code can be fucking done, man. I know it can be done. I just couldn't find the right devs. You know, it, it, it's in your mind, you know, you know, it's possible. It's just you're not connected with the right people. You don't. You, you, and then you guys, uh, this is all leading to Forge. You know, I, went, I, <laughs> I, can, I can already see it. <laughs> I, I paid all of my investors back. I gave my investors my money back. I said, look, guys, I failed. I, I, I can't get this done. I'm sorry. Two and a half years of working at this. I quit. Here's your money back. Right. So I didn't have something like Forge. Four years ago or five what shit 2018 six years ago i'm old man so so six years ago i started and we didn't have anything like this so tell me how someone like me could have benefited for something like forge yeah um exactly so the forge we call it a launch pad and an incubator but it's i think it's really much more than that it's almost like a decentralized kickstarter uh, because it allows you to just come and start your idea at any at any stage so you could have just come in and say, hey, this is my idea. At the really, really beginning, you can have a little deck or a little white paper or something like that. And um, and the amazing thing that we've seen in our prototypes where we've done over 100 project, projects is that teams formed around these ideas. So you didn't have to go out and do it all yourself, right? You will come in, write a white paper, something like that. And then you have all these analysts come in and say, hey, I love it, you know, and I think this, you know, would be maybe better tokenomics. Or you have a developer come in and says, hey, I love it. I want to join the team. So you can incubate this idea over time. You can have your team form over time, and then you can have your community form. And once you're ready through this process, then you go for fundraising, you know? it's You're not in the beginning coming, this is my team, this is my idea, everything is done, and now I fundraise almost no project i mean it's so hard to have it everybody who's here who, who's created projects before knows how extremely hard it is to to develop everything you know the idea takes forever to develop the actual implementation you keep tuning it's just it's a lot of money a lot of time so the idea that you can have a small team come and create a, a project that will work get funded and succeed is very 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 rare but to come in and have the people that you need out of the community. And you know, the polishing community is, is huge, right? It's big, there's a lot of people, a lot of developers, everything you need is there. So yeah, the difference will be, you could have come, you could have had your team form around it and could have, you can still do it. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure your idea is still there and um, social media has not taken over Web3 um, yet. So, yeah, that I think to me is the most exciting part of the Forge because I've done many projects myself, some successful, some not. And I would have loved to have a platform like this where I can get the team around. Yeah, yeah we've been uh, working on anti-gravity for three years now. And if something like the Forge were around at the beginning, we would have shortened that just tremendously. 
we also spent way too much money on the wrong team and had no idea for a year that we were working with the wrong team and spending way more than we had to on this team. So had the forge been around back then, we would have gotten a lot more help quickly. And now we finally, we're finally at the point where we have finished code and we're ready to do um, private test net, but we're out of funds. Like we're out of cash. We got, we've still got to go through audit. We've still got to go through bug bounty. We've still got to get some marketing out there. Right. And so we're trying as we can, as we get things actually ready to share and present, we're bringing everything to the forge to see what, what we're missing even at this stage in the game. So I'm, I'm, I wish the forge was here earlier. I'm really glad it's here now as, as a, as a founder. And as somebody from the outside looking in, I saw the forge and I, I think it was my boy Firestarter. He's the one that reached out to me and said, Hey, Randy, you need to look at this. And I said, okay. And I went and I bought 20 of the NFTs. <laughs> I was the, the curator <laughs> forge NFTs. I was like, okay, YOLO. <laughs> Let's go into this one. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, and you I guys think, are still selling the Forge NFTs right now. You can still yes, get those. Yes, so please come over <laughs> um, to the curator. Uh, maybe should I give you guys the link? Here yeah. You put it in the chat. Or I'll paste it here. There we go. Cool. I maybe need to put the HTTP in. Yeah, I think the, the best way to look at the Forge, again, it's not like a launch pad. It's just we've built this place that allows people to write reviews about crypto projects. And we saw naturally how valuable that information is for, for startups. And that made such a huge difference that people can just come um, post their projects and get feedback from lots of people who are potential investors and users and everything. And normally projects never get that. They don't get it until way, 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 way later. Um, so I think that's just the, the, the very powerful part. My, my thing about the Forge was I get to look at it and be an early observer of a project. And I could be an early investor in a project, like a decentralized investing. And then as uh, one of the curators within the Forge, I get to earn I could actually turn this into, if I wanted to, a nice job where I can go in every day and look at these different projects and say, hey, look, you guys can adjust this and it'll make it better. Then once they adjust it, then I come up with a new comment. Okay, you guys are looking good. Thank you for taking care of that. You know, you help them along with, with our knowledge as somebody, I've, I've launched over 40 projects, been part of at least as their social media and their marketing team. I have some knowledge that I can provide and I can guide them along. And then once they're live, I earn some of their tokens, correct? Yes. And <laughs> they may turn into a lot of money. You just never know. So uh, I think that's a, a genius way for, for people who are, maybe they don't have a lot of money to invest in projects, but if they get in early, that little bit of time that they spend, they turn into a lot of money. See what you're yeah. saying there is early, right? Okay, so here, here's the thing, guys. Now listen to this. There's a difference between bull market and bear market, okay, mindset. So in the bull market mindset, what you need to do is you need to be going and looking for like new things, the shiny new stuff, right? Well, here's the thing about what the Forge is doing. So the Forge is, has people like me going in, which I haven't missed yet this year. <laughs> so you can you can trust me when I, when I say something is bad, it's most likely bad. Uh, but when I go in and I take a look at a project <clears throat> that's going to launch, right? I'm I'm checking it out and I either give it the thumbs up or the thumbs down. And then you can go in, you can be like, okay, so there's a lot of trusted people here who've already looked into it. They really like it. I think this project's going to do good. Bam. You can throw in a little bit of money that most like, you know, not everybody's going to have thousands and thousands of dollars to throw into a project, right? So you're only going to have like maybe a couple hundred bucks. Throw it in there. Throw it in there. Scratch your bet. See where it goes when it launches. More than likely for people like me who are going in and reviewing things, it's going to do very good. And so then, bam. There you are. You've made a lot of money, and that's how you make money in during the bull run. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, I think uh, one, one thing that we learned over this kind of past half year reviewing projects is, um, you know, there's all these VC guys, and they have their analysts, and they go in and they do their type of analysis on the project, um, trying to understand the fundamentals and so on. 
Um, but on our side, we had like these, you know, 60, 70 plus um, analysts who are all kind of different people. You know, some are just traders, some are DGEN, some are actual VCs, some are uh, project founders. So it's a whole cross section of the market. And they just gave their opinions, you know, they didn't go and they do a structured fundamental research paper thingy, you know, they just said, this is how I feel about it. And when you get, when you see how the cross section of the market feels about it, it's, it's very often, it seems to be a much better signal of how a project will ultimately do or not, because that's what it is. It's, it's how do people perceive a project in the end? Um, that's what makes it, you know, do well or not. So yeah, that was that was a cool thing. <laughs> we lost awesome. Learned. Awesome. Any anyone else want to uh, say anything about the the Forge Council and Curator while we're still on that subject? Uh, maybe I, I want to make a bit of an announcement. <laughs> I, I haven't made it anywhere else yet, and I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to say it yet. Um, but uh, I'm going on on Discord Syndicate on uh, Wednesday night, so. You know, please join us there for the official announcement. But uh, we're going to host a regular show on there um, where we are going to have the best rated projects that come through the Forge are going to come there. And um, we're going to invite, we're still figuring out the actual format. Um, but so, yeah, projects come into the Forge. It will take, you know, probably a couple of months, something like that for them to improve, to get the right ratings. And then the top of the top of the top will then go um will then go on the show there um to you know kind of like a shark tank thing a little bit where the different analysts will will interview the project and and really you know after a few months of massaging it um just presented really well all parts of it so um yeah that's going to be really amazing and we talked to randy about doing something similar and pulse ray at something similar um, so the plan is that we're going to have an entire um, an entire roadshow for projects that once they have good ratings and they can get funded, they go to one channel after another, the entire community goes on them, and then boom, <laughs> they have their lift off. So it's really exciting, super exciting development that I think I always wanted to build for the Forge. It makes so much sense to get this exposure once something is highly rated. But yeah, now it's coming together with a lot of um, uh, with, with a lot of the streamers coming behind that. So it's really awesome. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So, sorry, break a, a cut off vets, but he he can also uh, talk about this. When we were in Vegas, Kalen set up uh, uh, basically a pitch for five different projects. So we sat there, and they had five different people pitch their ideas for uh, their projects, and there was five thousand dollars on the line. Uh, that the winner was able to use for for their project. So that was really interesting, not just interesting to see the different ideas and projects. And a lot of them had a lot of the same ideas and, you know, about educating kids and other, you know, social networks. But um, just seeing how some of them you could tell had made the pitch before and were ready to roll. And some of them were had not practiced, you know, so they were having a hard time jamming everything they needed to say in those five minutes so it's great practice for anyone like me that's like needs to do the elevator pitch needs to get to answer answering questions and give people the information they need as soon as possible so sorry go ahead go ahead vets yeah so uh mark um so you're gonna be hosting a time slot on discourse syndicate is that what I'm getting? So, so that is the plan. Yes, we're going to. Yeah, um, that's that's really cool. That that's, I like <laughs> that. I think that's good. That's I think that's what it's about, and I think it's a great platform. Um, and then in that regard, um, Pulse Ray or Hex Ray Vision. Um, I, I'll, I'll answer to anything, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, at this at the uh, seminar, yeah, it was really cool that they did uh, the pitches. Um, I think it, it all feeds off of each other. Um, and repetition is key. It's like an interview, like, like anything, like set up some people, you know, some just loved ones, whatever, put them on the couch and have them fire back, practice your pitch, right? You got to be off the cuff. What's your 30 second elevator pitch, this, that. Um, and the more you do it, the easier, you know, it becomes the more comfortable you are. 
um, and all those things. So it, it goes hand in hand. Um, was it so that 5K was divided, I think, amongst the top three? And uh, I think Tang Talk, right, with Drac and them was number one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and who was number two and three? I think Casey got number three for the kids. Uh, I, I don't but anyways, it's a great concept. They should keep doing it. Um, and a uh, big, big fan of that. And the Pulse Chain Tour of itself. Um, had, you know, I was there. Um, Pulse Ray Vision was there. Uh, uh, Zenith was there. Got to meet him in person. That was really cool. Um, and then leading into that, we got Utah here in April, man. So that's yeah. spectacular. Yeah, I'm going to be talking at that. Tank Talk's going to be talking at that. We've got Fashion Coder, who is just a, so such a lovely person and so, so wicked smart when it comes to understanding, you know, uh, she's, she speaks code and she speaks business. So she's really, she's going to bring a lot of value. Um, let's see, who else was going to be there? I, I just saw the speakers here yeah. a second ago. Well, re- restart your um, camera as well. You're frozen. Now, that always happens. I usually have my mouth wide open when it freezes. <laughs> this one's not bad. You're doing okay, buddy. You're I look co- I look like I'm contemplating something important. Um, no, no, I was going to say, yeah, Tane Talk's going to be there. Uh, let me see. I'm going to be giving a talk to I'm going to I'm going to share people um, what it was like to go from a truck driver that listened to YouTube all day to um, to retired and full time crypto. And kind of what that journey was like to let people know that if you do, if you hang in enough uh, cycles in crypto, you're going to get a doctorate's degree worth of information each cycle, right? right? YouTube doctorate, yeah, Twitter doctorate. You're, you're going to get it. You're going to get a, a crypto doctorate every, you know, every cycle. You're going to learn. Usually, painfully, you learn it, right? But uh, no, you. You you can earn and learn enough to earn enough to get the freedom that you want in life, and that's really what what my talk's going to be about. But you've got Captain RG three; he's going to be there, and then of course uh, Drac from from Tang Talk. You've got the giveaways and the raffles. They might uh, try to put together an informal pitch. That would be really cool if we could do that. One of that before after, of course, DIY investing is going to be there. Donovan, um, and then me me and uh, then AMAs with probably a panel of us. So that's going to be great if you're within, you know, some driving distance or traveling distance of Salt Lake. That's going to be a lot of fun too. So I wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Well, you got a couple of weeks to plan. So. Yeah, no, that's solid, man. That's a solid lineup. Unless you start to develop the itch, like, ooh, I gotta get to that one, you know. Like, and oh, and the after parties, even in oh. Salt Lake, even in Salt Lake, <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't tame the the hexagons and the pulsicans. Oh. They're they're a rowdy and crazy bunch. In fact, uh, one of our last uh, meetups, we went out with uh, we went out dancing at this club with with uh, with Fashion Coder. So Fashion Coder is a hell of a dancer. I'll just put that out there. Great dancer. The next morning, she takes us all to church, to her local church. It was the next morning. It was Sunday morning. So we all went to church with Fashion Coder. She's like, the person you see on YouTube is like the true person she is. There's no errors. Uh, and, and that's the way it is with every Hexkin I've met and Pulsekin that I've met in person. Adam is the same way. Randy's the same way. The, the person you meet is the person you get to hang out with and that they're they're the real genuine deal. So definitely do whatever you can to make it to, to that on April 13th. Uh, and then uh, the last thing I wanted to cover was the, the main difference between the layer ones. Because a lot of people just look at Pulse Chain and they say, oh, it's it's just a copy of Ethereum. It's not as, as popular as a Solana, blah, 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 blah. But we start from an ethos and a community belief of decentralization and helping the little person get into crypto and succeed. And I don't see that ethos at the bottom of any of the other layer ones or any of the other communities like we have here, where we are willing to give whatever we can to help the new guy, the little guy, and we're willing to share and be transparent and as honest as we can, right? So 
Uh, Fast Abdul says, Fashion Coder should marry <laughs> one of my three sons. I'll make arrangements with their father. <laughs> a fashion Coder's what father. Is how, many is, how many goats? How many goats? <laughs> how many, how many camels? <laughs> for you, my friend. <laughs> for you, for you, one time only. For you today, today. Um, that's hilarious. Uh, but no, it's it. That's that's the even Fashion Coder's dad is incredibly smart and work and understands engineering and and coding and uh, just just. Is, is full of knowledge. You can sit and learn so much from each one of the people in our, uh, in our community. Uh, what do you guys, what do you guys want to add or say about the, the real difference? What is the secret sauce of pulse chain and why do you think uh, it's going to win? Well, pulse chain is really popular. I, I like the way you put that. It's great for the little guy, right? It's great for the, the new guy. And this, this is why I'm saying put pulse chain as the front front face, right? Is because everybody's going to be going to Ethereum. That's where everybody's going to be at, right? And then from Ethereum, they're going to be like, "Oh, I can't really play in here when I'm only got when I've only got a couple hundred bucks, right?" Well, mm -hmm, over to Pulse Chain, it's it's just like Ethereum, only better, and we have a great community over here, and it's really cheap, easy peasy. I have to say, it's the community, guys. We we got an amazing community full of educators and people who are willing to help others. And uh, I mean, yeah, we're in Europe for. I think it was seven weeks during Christmas time last year. And every city we went to, we had meetups. Every city we met with somebody within the Pulse Chain community and people that, you know, I had never met before in person. And it was such a fabulous time. I saw Hex Sailing in the chat. We met him we were in, when we were in Ireland. We met Ali Kane, Pulse Wars founder. We met him when we were in Belfast. And it's just all across the board, wonderful people. And uh, it's just, it's just a, good shaking hands and realizing these are real people and i never had that really in the other ecosystems and i've been in crypto since 2014 so i really like it i totally agree i i agree definitely with the you know the belief in decentralization part it seems very very strong in in pulse chain and that's something that drew me personally quite quite strongly and especially the first people that i that i met from the community um, I, I think there's a, there's, there's a, I said that before, there's kind of a pro and a con to that, right? Because if you believe so much in decentralization, you also have a, you know, a bigger acceptance of anonymous teams and these kind of things. So I think it draws a little bit the best and the worst in, in, in some cases, right? Um, so it makes scams and rock pulls easier because, because you, you believe in these decentralization, um, principles but you know if we can build the right guardrails around them in a decentralized way then i think um, it really there's a there's a chance to have some real kind of decentralized marvels be to be built on on pulse chain so i'm, I'm very excited about that um i think community i think is also as you guys all say it's amazing everyone is super nice and you know i'm having a great time on every stream that i go everyone i talk to but I think the belief in decentralization is is going to still spark a lot of great things that we haven't seen yet. I think. Yeah, yeah I love it. I love it. We got um, yeah, yeah. Paul Sachs says, "I don't know if I can financially trust the faces on screen." Is a bribe required? <laughs> it says the secret sauce is the community's ability to network, educate, continue hardworking. I truly believe all can of Mexico is about one degree of separation from everyone else in the world. Okay. Can I say something about Paul Sack's bribe comment? Because it's really funny, because it's really pertinent to this to this talk. First, the forge, uh, it's built so that there is no bribing going on, right? There's a, it's like three branches of government that you have to go through. So there's no way to bribe the different users, the, the reviewers, the, the, the people with the NFTs and all that kind of stuff. That's one part where there are no bribes. And then we have Fast Abdul in the content, uh, <laughs> comments, the founder of Two Fucks, where bribes are all about the game, man. <laughs> so, uh, so we have both sides here. You know, I mean, yeah. like, you can argue it out. Uh, I did want to cover this. So Ivan Ramirez doesn't think that I'm I'm editing or ignoring him. He says, I'm most bullish on meme coins, Rob and Trump. Good store of value for Pulse since they pump a lot and then... I get more pulse via LP. Do either of you guys know anything about the Rob or the Trump uh, memes? 
Yeah, so Trump Trump is one that uh, currently right now is uh, with the DGen guys, the not DGen roundtable, but um, the DGen protocol guys. They are um, you know kind of pumping up Trump right now. But then also, um, Rob is Ro uh, <laughs> Richard's only brother, so the community <laughs> there is actually a good one. Uh, if you have a good community and in, in a meme token, I think it's a good idea to get into it. <laughs> but the other thing too that people need to understand is that. You need to have like your your foundation, your core coins, right? For us, you know, that's going to be hex, pulse, pulse X, right? Um, maybe you could throw ink in there. I don't know. That's a little bit memeish though. But then you then you want your scratchers underneath that, and the scratchers are supposed to be leverage on those core coins. Okay, so that doesn't mean that you're sitting in them and you believe in them long forever and ever and ever, right? You know, maybe there's something you can do with them, sure, but for the main part, what you want them to be is you want to throw just a little bit of money into them. Okay. Wait for them to pump, which is going to pump harder than like say pulse or whatever. And then you transfer them over into pulse, pulse X, such as that. And then those coins will pump even harder. And you can actually multiply the amount of X's on your core coins that way. So that's, that's what it comes to that. But that's a little more advanced of a game. Um, you generally, the, the, <laughs> the easiest way to think about this is going to be, Hey, do you like, this coin do you like what the community is doing like rob right richard's only brother do you like that cool grab it grab it and have fun with it ride the wave guys hey uh I, the two so on your last uh topic there i was just gonna have my two cents about uh man like i'm the most non-computer guy background non-coder there is in the world and like i have a validator I'm running a note, like, like, come on, man. If I'm doing it, like, you guys can do it. And it's affordable. Dude, it's even more affordable. They got, like, NFTs now. Like, you can team up with the GOAT and, and the Fetter and, you know, put up, like, 8 or 10 million pulse or something. And and uh, the little guy can get a piece of that NFT and get some re uh, rewards for, you know, putting together a uh, – a validator and participating with that ecosystem um or you're doing 32 million to create a you know for each uh, individual validator but if i did it if i learned it now it took like all three of them to help me get to that point um and a lot of penalties but man you know don't be afraid of the 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 felonies and the misdemeanors like i was down deep but I made I made a comeback. It took a month or two, but it came back, and now it's churning and burning. And you know we have you know unique events, man. That shit just keeps going in my wallet. It's a beautiful thing. I love it. So that's what I like about Pulse Chain. It's, it's... oh yeah. And if you don't mind, uh, real quick, um, since we were shouting out the DGen Protocol guys, right? We're actually going to be having them on our show tonight, and that's going to be at eight Eastern. So. Yeah, come come join us at the DJ roundtable. Have a good time with those guys. We're gonna be uh, having a party, basically. <laughs> awesome, cool. Well, hey, let's go around. Uh, I want everyone to obviously shill their so where where they can find you, what they're a part of, and uh, your next upcoming stream or event. And then I want you to pick three projects right now. Um, when we were in Vegas most people agree the sentiment was like you've got till may or june to get your bags packed in the altcoin market obviously bitcoin went and did some crazy jump already and then ethereum's not going to be that much further after we believe and so what what three coins would you recommend people pack up before the rocket takes off uh, let's start with mark uh, Ray, I was just going to say that I, I don't think I can say three coins because I was busy building so much in the last few 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 uh, weeks, and you know I kind of took my eyes off the off the market, so I don't want to just I have my you know coins in my head, but uh, I haven't even, even really been following the last few weeks, so I'd rather have all the other guys um, say what they love first. All right, go all right. for it for. Uh, um... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, Randy. All right, all right. So uh, first of all, I want to lead off with UpX. I think UpX is going to be doing fabulous. It's a leverage trade on um, on Pulse Chain and Pulse X. I think Pulse X is about ten percent of the uh, the trade. Uh, they just started. They added another part to UpX this week, and that is the um, the Pulse Chain validators. So I think UpX is going to do very well 
once everything kicks off. And, it, and uh, you know, uh, leverage isn't a bad thing, especially when you're not the one having to pull the trigger all the time. <laughs> you know, if you're the one having to manage it, it's a pain in the ass. But uh, if you don't have to, I think it'll be very good. Uh, the other one I think uh, is SparkSwap. And the reason why I care so much about SparkSwap is because I'm betting on AJ. Uh, AJ, he, there's just something about the guy that he cares about our ecosystem, but he wants to, similar to uh, the Hart's Law, he wants Pulse Chain to be like an octopus within the crypto ecosystem. He wants to be in Avalanche. He wants to be in part of the layer twos and all of it just all mixed in. And I think that's an important aspect that a lot of people are missing. And and having the bridge over and uh, Sparkler, he's doing some really dynamic things that nobody else is doing. Nobody's thinking about this shit, but AJ is, and he's building it already. And I think uh, if you haven't checked out Sparkler, guys, get into it. It is one of the coolest things about SparkSwap. Nobody else has it. Uh, I think that's going to be big. And obviously, nope. nope. We, we got shit going on that you guys don't know about. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and it's nice having a benevolent whale. The the number, you know, the, the guy that owns 13% of INC is my benevolent whale. So uh, he, he's... He's a wonderful person, and he is um, he cares about the ecosystem. And he said to me the other day, he goes, I've helped multiple projects in Pulse Chain. He goes, but Randy, Nope is the only group that did not dump on me. I was like, oh, isn't that an amazing thing? Because No Permissions Group, we educate that farming is where it's at, and that's what we try to do. So there you go. Awesome. Awesome. That's uh, where can people find you? When is your next event? And what three coins would you say people should pack before May, May June? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Vets and Crypto, common spelling on uh, the X uh, side of things. Most importantly, uh, Vets and Crypto on YouTube. Catch us on Mondays with Mr. Randy Halarski, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard. Um, and then... Uh, you know, I like, so I have uh, the Vets token out there, you know, that's kind of just a selfish thing. Um, but there's going to be, hopefully, it's going to be utilized as a reward for those that may participate in a donation type of a project, what have you. Uh, maybe if I had access or something to the addresses that participated in the pool party, maybe magically some Vets token would appear as a token of appreciation. It's not worth anything now, but it might be something in the future. Um, I've learned a lot from uh, Coach and, and Access Alive as far as bonded liquidity and throwing out a bunch of pairs. And, you know, the we have the audit, automated market maker, the bots, the ARB bots in the Pulse Chain ecosystem that just buy and sell. Those little bastards are working 24-7, heart nonstop. And um, love her or hate them, you know, you bond enough stuff that it goes together. Um, what else? Uh, interesting to see what Pulsar will do. Um, you know, the Axis token is good. Uh, and, I, you know, up and up X. Uh, really a big, uh, you know, believer, supporter, investor in that ecosystem. So I'll shut up. Awesome. Thank you very much. And Adam, where do people find you, follow you, what's your next event, and three coins? Um, Viber Finance everywhere. I stream pretty much five nights a week, and I've given you 10 50x gems in the last three, four months, so just follow me on stream. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh, playing it cool. He's like, you got to come. All right, all right, all right. here's an AI gem. AI is the hot narrative. Store, um, so layer AI, LAI, AI power grid. GPU is too late, just 50x. Um, and then D pin is going to be a huge narrative. Storage chain. Don't miss that. D -P -I -N? That's the CEO there has already brought two uh, companies to $10 million plus. So this is his third go around. Dude's a legend. How do you I spell would... D-PIN? No, that's a narrative, like decentralized okay. physical infrastructure. Okay. It, and it's like AI, gaming. Got it. A storage chain, W-S-T-O-R. So like things like Helium Mobile, um, Helium, uh, uh, there's, you know, just utility type stuff. And, and yeah, I'm 100% with you, Vibra. Um, I've mentioned it once or twice. Um, 
we'll talk about it on Monday. I'll go over it again a little bit. But D Pen ecosystem is is awesome. Yeah, fucking. I'm running out of room on my yeah. notepad here, guys. Then, yeah, and then BioFi too. It's on Avalanche. They're working with the the mobile phones with uh, to bring biometrics to the blockchain, and they just signed a deal with. Uh, yeah, what phone, but it's still a tiny market cap. It's like sub 10 million. So these are gems, storage chains under a million. So these things, I mean, you look at three or four of them. If one of them takes off, you're looking at like 100 to 500 X easy. And then I would look at Cubic too. Cubic, something's going, something's special there. The founder of that coin, he was uh, the founder of IOTA. He was way back. He was around with Satoshi. And uh, yeah, there, there's something special with Cubic. Love it. Love it. All right, Nate. Nate, where can people find you? What's your next event? And also three coins that you think people should throw their bags for the next wave. Well, as you can see on the screen right there, DGen Roundtable, come hang out with us. This, These are the times. Yes, as Will has politely said here, we have our normal show on Sundays, which there's a wide variety of things that we do with that. It's kind of like what's most important at the time. Uh, but then also we got book clubs on Fridays, which this coming Friday, uh, the next Friday here, is actually going to be Sci Vibe. We are going to have a Wild SJ getting on with us, and it's going to be Chapter One. I guess you could call it Bible study, <laughs> <laughs> almost. Uh, but yeah, then every other Wednesday is Whiskey Wednesdays. That is our community, uh, basically just time. Everybody from the community come in, have a good time, right? Uh, we drink on the stream. It's a good, it's a good time. But then flip that right to every other Wednesday every other other Wednesday is a special guest so you know it's just for people in in the uh, in the community just come on talk about things that they're doing and then yeah try and inspire a lot of people and as of right now I'm doing consultations because there's a lot of people who are getting left behind right now and there's still time for you guys to get in before the 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 true ramp up in the bull market really actually happens here so uh, I have my, uh, I got my link tree somewhere in the comments around here, but yeah, uh, I, I do have right my link tree here. Let me see. I yeah, go ahead and get in, get into my link tree, right? Uh, follow me on Twitter since now I have a Twitter. Yay. Uh, but yeah, I'm also taking consultations only one a day. All right. And I'm basically like booked out at this point, but you can get in, I can schedule you um, in uh, be able to basically just kind of save your uh, finances. But at the same time, too, um, yeah, that's kind of what we got going on. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then three coins, three coins. So as of right now, actually, you're going to want to, uh, if you haven't packed your bags yet, get into Pulse, Pulse X now. I'm not saying Hex, though. I'm going to actually say uh, a very important one here uh, is going to be a Hex Orange address. That one right there, uh, it's great, great, great community, and they're almost like a cult, which is kind of what you want. But you have a chance to pack your further pack your bags with Pulse and Pulse X as of right now. So get into it, guys. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much, very much. And I am Pulse Ray Vision, also known as Hex Ray Vision and Max. And you can find me at Hex Ray Vision on almost every platform out there, including Facebook, which I, I don't even think I have Facebook anymore. But um, yeah, you can catch me here next week on Tech Talk. We have uh, Ali Kane from Pulse Wars. He's going to be on here with us. We got Fashion Coder with us next week and probably some more special guests, obviously. So come check that out. That'll be wonderful. Again, I'm going to be in Salt Lake on April 13th at the, the meetup. Um, and the, the coins I would tell people to look at is, is Pulse. And um, I would tell people go to our our telegram which is anti-gravity saga t.me forward slash anti-gravity saga.com we're finally finishing the code and ready to go to the private test net and we're going to raise funds for our audit and our bug bounty program so we're ready to launch so come on there you will uh we'll, we'll set that up we actually have an nft receipt which will give you points based on your donation and uh, it's just a wish that you're making, a wish for a better community right now. And those points may or may not be worth something in the future, but you are getting 10 times more points during the fundraising than when we start our mining phase. When we start our mining phase, uh, you know, you're, you're gonna get a lot less points because there's a lot less risk because it's gonna be a finished product and ready to roll by then. So keep an eye on that. And I'll also be joining Mark on any of the streams I can 
join him on with uh, whether it's Discourse Syndicate or him and me just going uh, together. That would be great. And follow all of these guys on their socials. Hit the like button and share any of these clips. I've been clipping little bite-sized pieces of this because not everybody has an hour and 20-minute time you know, uh, attention span. So check that out. And, and uh, again, I can't thank these guys enough for coming and sharing their time and their heart and their alpha with us. It's, it's beautiful. And so now we are going to leave the way we always leave our tech talks, which is the awkward wave goodbye. So if you haven't been here before, I need you to look into the camera and as awkwardly as possible, wave goodbye <laughs> to, to this uh, community as we leave. Viper Finance just bounces. He's like, he gave us the Irish goodbye on St. Patrick's I'm, Day. I'm still here. I got, I got animals running around all over here. All right. Thanks. We love you guys. Have a wonderful St. Patrick's Day. We'll see you on the next Tech Talk. Bye.